Welcome back to the garage. We're gonna take a break from working on bikes today and focus on working on the BMW 5 Series. That's right, we're turning our attention away from the Ducati and moving on to the 535i, which is equipped with the N55 inline six turbocharged engine. This car has been pretty wonderful overall for the three years I've owned it, but one thing has been persistent ever since buying it, and that is the less than smooth running of this engine. Now, no check engine lights are thrown, no codes are being stored, but this engine does not idle smoothly at all. Like it feels like it has one or two cylinders randomly misfiring and it just, it's so intermittent, but it almost happens every single time you drive it. You'll be sitting at a stoplight and you'll just feel the car rocking side to side. You don't see any sort of indicator on the tachometer that something's wrong, obviously, no check engine light comes on, but man, it feels like the car wants to die. Now this also seems to be paired with inconsistent throttle response. Sometimes on throttle tipping, you'll get a lot of revs, and then sometimes you'll get hardly any revs or no revs. And since this car is equipped with a six-speed manual transmission, that makes it kind of difficult to drive, especially in stop and start traffic. Now I've tried so many things, trying to diagnose what's going on here, looking for vacuum leaks, looking for boost leaks, looking for ignition problems, looking for fuel system problems. There's nothing wrong with this car. I feel like I've gone through everything and I just can't find anything wrong with it at all. That was until I started researching the Vanos system on these engines and found out that the Vanos actuators, which there are two of at the front of the engine, tend to go out at the mileage my car is sitting at, which is around 100, 110,000 miles. They even call it preventative maintenance on these engines, which is kind of wild, but it is a thing that can give you the symptoms I'm experiencing without getting any check engine lights. So that's what today's focus is going to be on, replacing those Vano solenoids and seeing if anything changes. Now I tried to do a bit of a experiment by putting a glass of water on top of the engine cover, the old Lexus LS400 trick, and if the engine was running smooth, which an inline six engine should run smooth, you shouldn't see any abnormal vibrations that cause the whole glass to rock back and forth. And as you can see, that is happening on this engine. There's clearly something amiss here, and we're going to see if we can't fix it. Now, thankfully, BMW's put these Venus actuators at the front of the engine where they're relatively accessible. So we're gonna go in there, replace them, and see if we can't solve this problem once and for all. I'm seeing that there is a wiring bracket that's bolted to the front of the engine that makes it very difficult to slide out the bottom Vano solenoid. So I'm gonna see if I can't unbolt it from the engine so that I can slide that solenoid out. It appears that there are two 10 millimeter bolts. We will see if that's true. Well, 
That is the socket on the belly pan. Well, I managed to get it out without having to remove that bracket. It is a very tight fit. I just hope that allows me to put the new one in without too much problem. That is the bottom one removed. The oil seal fell off, so I'll have to retrieve that. All right, so here are the old solenoids out, and visually, I mean, there's nothing obvious wrong with them, but you can tell these are likely the originals just based on the oil buildup that's there. But you can see some really dark deposits, and while it doesn't look like anything on the outside, if those start building up on the internal pieces of that solenoid, that can start preventing it from moving back and forth, opening and closing smoothly. So that could be what's causing this to start to fail, if this in fact is the problem. So both of them look generally the same. See that the seals still decently supple in all honesty. And these are like spacers, they're plastic. Uh, one of them dropped down to the belly pan on the car, so I'll have to retrieve that later. But the good news is the new ones I've got uh, come with all of this, so I don't need to use any of the old hardware. So I ordered Pureberg brand replacements. So Pureberg is the OEM manufacturer for BMW. So these are genuinely the BMW parts, just with the BMW logos and part numbers removed from the castings. So these are as high quality as you're gonna get. So you can see that these come with, again, that plastic spacer, new O-rings in the two spots. So yeah, these are basically genuine BMW at 50% of the cost. So definitely worth going with these. In fact, I always like to see where they've ground off the OEM or the BMW part numbers because they are the same casting again, the same mold. I think you can see it right here. They've ground off the uh, part number. You can see right here on the BMW part numbers right there and then right here you can see like a machining that goes across the part number they are the same solenoid top and bottom so you just order two of these and they're just a direct swap there is no way to get that bottom solenoid in without at least removing one of the bolts on this bracket on the front side of the engine. BMW, of course, have positioned it perfectly so that it has about two millimeters above that cylinder where it actually needs to be inserted in. So yes, you can force the solenoid out, but you can't put it back in. We're gonna see if I can't loosen the nut or the bolt on this side and pivot the bracket downward and see if that gives me the room I need. 
limited access would be putting this kindly. No, that's never gonna work anyways. Now I'm changing my strategy on this again. I've decided that I'm going to break off this little tab on this bracket because it truly is of no consequence and it'll make this easier to service in the future as well. So I'm just see if I can't break off this little ledge and allow this to be inserted directly. Okay, so I was able to pop off this piece on that bracket, which is just enough that I think now I can clear that barrel. Now, as you can see, this hasn't pressed all the way in, and really, using the screw to do that's just gonna bend the tab. It's not actually gonna push the whole assembly in. So, you need to get some sort of force on the metal surround to help drive it in. And I don't know the best way to do this. I've got a O2 sensor socket that I'm gonna try to do this. It has this cutout that allows you to put it around the plastic connector piece and I'm gonna to try to pry up against this radiator support and see if I can't pop it into place. There it goes. Just to give you an idea of what I was doing, so I had this pressed on there like that. And then you can safely push on it and you don't risk breaking the plastic connector because that would be really bad. All right, so that is both solenoids now installed. Looking good. Now I just gotta put that brace back on, engine cover, start it up and see if there's an improvement. So with that, the Vano solenoids are replaced and I've now driven the car around and the question remains, have the issues been resolved? And the answer is yes and no. 
So the idle, I feel like, is 50% improved. It's not as drastic, but there's still a little bit of a hint of a miss there. You do feel it through the cabin, but it doesn't shake the like shifter back and forth. It doesn't rock the whole cabin in an extremely noticeable way. I would say that if I'd started my ownership period with the state it's in now, I probably wouldn't do anything about it. So I would say it's fixed enough in that regard for me to just leave it be from here on out. Now I would say the biggest improvement is throttle response. It's now predictable. It no longer lunges and surges in first and second gear, especially when the engine's cold, which was also something I was experiencing before. Hadn't even thought to mention it earlier, but I've gone and driven this car and it's like smooth as glass all of a sudden. Also gear shifts are a lot more consistent and smooth because every time you feed in throttle after letting out the clutch, it does exactly what you expect it to do versus either giving a ton of revs or no revs at all and causing you to buck. So suddenly the drivability of this car has actually improved monumentally. So I'm very pleased with these results, especially for the relatively low spend it took to get it fixed. I guess I can stand behind the notion that these are really just routine maintenance replacement parts and that you hit 100,000 miles, you should probably just go ahead and change them out. So that's all there is for this video. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you all again soon.